Hello and welcome to another course in NativeLang.com's series of Linguistics Lessons for Language Learners. This time around we're going to look at how languages change over time, as well as how they're related to each other. There's something on the order of 6,000 languages spoken around the world, depending on how exactly we would define and count individual languages. That brings up a really good question. How would we define language? How would we define individual human languages? That's actually a tough definition to give. Here's one possible scenario. Let's say that we have a speaker, person 1, who comes into contact with another speaker, person 2, and speaker 1 is able to speak to person 2 and be understood by person 2. And the same goes in reverse. Person 2 is able to speak with and be understood by person 1. In that case, we have grounds for establishing mutual intelligibility. In other words, the two people can speak with and understand each other. And this is potentially something we might call a language. They share a common language. Now, they also share a common language with speaker 3 if person 3 comes, meets speakers 1 and 2, and is able to speak with and be understood by both. All three of these people share a common language. There's mutual intelligibility. Now, what if speakers 1, 2, and 3 visit a new area, a new region, where they can understand the people and be understood by the people in this new region? But the speech differs somewhat. The speech of the people in this new region differs from the speech of speakers 1, 2, and 3 in some notable way. Well, we would say that speakers 1, 2, and 3 and the speakers in this new region have differing dialects. But the speech of these different speakers doesn't just vary depending on the region, it also varies depending on the social situation. So we might find that all of these people, speakers 1, 2, and 3, use a different form of their language when they're speaking at home or at work or in an official capacity with, say, a government representative. In all of these cases, we find different registers. In other words, different social forms of the language. There's also room for individual speech patterns, and this would define an idiolect. This is on the personal, individual level. In all of these instances, speakers still share mutual intelligibility and a common language. So there's something like 6,000 of these languages spoken around the world. These languages don't differ from each other at random. Instead, some languages are related to some other languages and unrelated to other languages. It works a lot like genetic relationships, like family trees. During the rest of this course, we'll consider methods for comparing any two languages or multiple languages and seeing how closely they're related to each other, as well as how to look back in time to extend that relationship into the past and consider how we would determine or even reconstruct the parent or ultimate ancestor language. So I hope you'll stick with me as we work through these next three lessons, learning how to use the historical comparative method to look back in time into individual languages and language relatedness.